Yes. Okay. So now the question is: Is there a way? Is there a way to solve a linear system by repeatedly just applying y equal to ax? That's actually fundamentally the idea of iterative methods. To just solve the system by applying y equal to ax. And I would like to motivate the method. Uh, and I'm sure this is one of the motivations of the initial development of the method is to actually, instead of solving the Poisson's equation, why don't we solve just the heat equation until the temperature becomes equilibrium? Right? So if you solve the Poisson's equation, I am looking at, uh, let's just uh, uh, plug in temperature, for example. The second order derivative of temperature plus F equal to zero. So basically, this is saying that I want to solve the equilibrium heat transfer problem when I have a, a heat source F in the domain. F is the unit, uh, the, the amount of heating per unit space, right? And then T is going to be the temperature distribution. Well, you need to apply some uh, uh, coefficient on top of this, but like uh, uh, mathematically, let's just uh, lump it into F. Okay, so this is actually the same as solving the equation partial t partial t equal to uh, partial square t partial x square plus f. Right. So this is an unsteady heat transfer problem that has time in it. But if the problem is well posed, then if I solve this equation for long enough, if I call OD45 and time advance it to longer and longer and longer times, eventually my solution is going to be closer and closer and closer to the solution to this equation, right? And solving this equation does not require any matrix inversions. Solving this equation, just if you use an explicit scheme, it just requires me to actually evaluate the right hand side. And the evaluation of the right hand side, even if I approximate this with A times T, just requires application of the matrix vector multiplication, which we know how to take advantage of the sparsity. Right? So the that kind of motivates the type of iterative methods. And but the, the, there is a significant difference between actually want to solve this equation to obtain the time history of the temperature versus I want to solve this equation just to get the final steady state is that I no longer care about so-called time accuracy. For example, when discretizing this uh, derivative ddt, I no longer care about what order of accuracy am I discretizing it with. It's completely fine to have a zero order of accuracy discretization, right? As long I, as I have superb stability, uh, uh, superb stability properties, so that I can take huge time steps, right? I really want to take huge time steps because I want to get to the equilibrium as fast as possible, and I care nothing about the order of accuracy of my discretization of DDT. So really, you can think of iterative methods of solving linear systems as just a, a way to discretize a time-dependent problem, while the discretization completely throws away any consideration of accuracy and putting all the emphasis on stability properties. Yes? Yes. So, yeah, so this equation would be stable if you use an explicit scheme, right? As, as long as you choose a time step to be small, right? For example, if you solve it using forward order, we know exactly where the, um, where the eigenvalues of the system has to lie. And uh, uh, therefore, it puts a restriction on what's the maximum time step, right? So we, we actually... Uh, talk about that because using forward order is actually for a uniform grid spacing is actually equivalent 
to the first uh, iterative method we are going to introduce. Okay, so so that's that's actually the Jacobi method. 